Two seconds, guys. One sec. Hi. <laughs> I see a few people waiting. I'm sorry I'm a minute or two late. This stuff is so stressful. Um, normally, when I'm filming, it's just me out here talking to my phone. <laughs> so hopefully everyone can hear me. Let's see. Thank you. All right, so unfortunately, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this in portrait mode because once you go live on YouTube, it doesn't let you change the orientation. <laughs> so we can still, I'm gonna turn the camera around and we'll do the tour, but obviously landscape would have been better. But, you know, I think if I disconnect it, I'd have to start all over. So thank you, Vicki, thank you for letting me know. All right, so, um. I'm trying to decide where to start. Let's go up to the front gate and I'll turn around. <clears throat> you guys are getting a peek at what I've been doing for the last week, walking around, looking at my phone, <laughs> making sure there's Wi-Fi everywhere. All right, let's turn the camera around. All right, so I can still see chat, but you guys can see what I'm seeing. So this is the, I guess we're calling it the white pine. Um, I'm up here at the front gate and let's see, I'm using all kinds of gadgets. So this is an area that I've been doing a lot of work on. Hey, how are you? So this area, I think we're going to call it the white pine garland or garland garden. I, I still have a Christmas wreath up. So I think that's my, maybe why. But let me catch my breath here while people join us. But um, this is really coming out nicely. Um, in fact, let's start here because this is an area where I've been adding a lot of new perennials. And I feel, I feel a little bad. I was going to tell you guys that I was going to rip out these yellow and white daffodils because I got the wrong ones from the bulb supplier and they are they're very lovely let's see but they were supposed to be all white i i totally understand i said at the introduction youtube unfortunately does not let you change the rotation and unfortunately when i went live i went live in portrait mode and i think if i try to stop it and change it i'll lose the feed so unfortunately we couldn't do this without some technical difficulty and now we have portrait mode. So sorry about that. I promise if I do this again, which I would like to, uh, I'll get it right in portrait mode, but at least I got it working. So the bulb supplier sent me white and yellow daffodils when they were supposed to be an all white mix. And I think for any of you guys that have watched any of my planning videos, I'm pretty rigorous about color schemes and bright daffodil yellow is just not my color but then I watched Laura from how's it growing talking about how much her yellow daffodils were cheering her up and making her it made me feel bad <laughs> that I don't love them like I should but um so yeah all of this is coming along so this the past week or so I've been working on adding in some astilbe bare root astilbe which are just starting to come up and then I had bought some Brunnera in landscape size so you guys can see this is what like a little two inch plug plant looks like um, and then these are all autumn anemones so I'm doing them in drifts there are some sorry the gimbal does not take well to sudden movements, which is probably good for me since some of the feedback I get is that I jerk the camera around too much. <laughs> so I have a couple of all white Japanese anemones. Those are the autumn blooming anemones, not to be confused with the massive amounts of spring anemones. And I added in more. So I'm really loving how this is waking up. Uh, I happened to see it from my office 
And it makes me just feel like eventually I will get this kind of coverage in all parts of the garden. Uh, it's just gonna take a little more time. But I will leave the daffodils for now. I will debate about whether or not I'm gonna change them out for an all white mix. Yeah, I get it. I don't wanna mess up your name. Luba? I'm gonna take a guess. Um, they are, they're so cheerful. It's just not my color. And I have to say the bulb supplier did offer me a refund so I can try to get more white ones for next year. Um, but they're absolutely everywhere. <laughs> so here's more. Um, that, so I got, I had posted about, oh good, all right, perfect. So those are some little, a still be fronds popping up from my recent bare root planting and the rest of them are starting to sprout i've added a still be in a couple of locations uh, the one thing i'm learning if you buy plants in landscaper quantities you're going to end up with 30 of something uh, 21 of something so i had to really be strategic about what i was putting where and know that I could spread them around because I am on a city lot, which is a large garden for the city of Philadelphia, but I am not with, uh, you know, I don't have unlimited space. But yeah, the, the yellow are fairly cheerful. Uh, and I think this will just continue to transform, but I think this give you guys a good overview of the kind of coverage I'm looking for. We had so many weeds to remove and still are removing now onion grass. Let's let this recycling truck go by. So I am in a city um, and until we have some bigger shrubs and trees added, it's gonna be a little bit noisy. But um, I think I mentioned in the description, I've been doing a lot of peony stalking. Let's try to get the gimbal to move. So that is a um, bowl of cream and herbaceous peony. That's what they look like. If you have ever collected peonies <laughs> or have any, they are so fun to stalk. Uh, wandering over here, this is another area that is filling in really nicely. This is a lot more tulips than daffodils in it and lots of bearded iris. Um, and we did just make one decision and that is, let me see if I can get the camera to turn, that we are actually gonna remove all of this grass and make all of this flower bed, partially because of the onion grass situation and partially just because we like how this, we, me and my husband Tim, like how this is turning out. And we've never really had nice grass growing in this area. It's a weird area to mow. So I think we're gonna turn it all into bed. So now at the sidewalk here, the walkway, this will all be garden. Unfortunately, that means I'll be moving a lot of stuff again, but that seems to be what happens when you are continually working on a garden in progress. But. This is another area I am so excited to see the, um, let's see, hang on, sorry guys, the gimbal's getting stuck. Um, this is my lavender cream golden flower bed. There are tons of daffodils, ranunculus, anemones. I just actually saw the first, see that is butterfly ranunculus something I got a lot of questions about in my anemone and ranunculus video and I will be sharing more sorry of course I picked recycling day to do my tour I'll be able to share more about this in maybe another month or so but I know so many people are interested in trying a lot of the bulbs that aren't available for home use and inspired partially by the daffodil mishap, I'm actually gonna be putting together some bulb collections. And I think I'm gonna be able to have the butterfly ranunculus available in 10 packs so people can try them.
in their gardens. So they are really an interesting plant, but we have hyacinths, shade loving plants, and now I'll be working on removing this grass. Uh, this is where a lot of my hellebores ended up. Uh, Mimi, a very lovely person I have known on Instagram for a while, was asking me about how to cut hellebores and condition them. And it's actually, there's not a trick to it. You have to wait until they lose their pollen. So as much as this double is really pretty, we have to wait until the seed pods form. But boy, that one is really pretty. I think this was part of the wedding party collection, which I think is a Proven Winners selection of about 20 different colors. It is on a slope and we have talked about this with our hardscaping contractor. Um, it's a little more level here. Let me see. It's gimbal. So many things to manage here. So yes, yeah, so you can see it slopes down a bit. This is partially due to downspouts from our house here. And I don't think you can really see it, but my neighbor's house faces my front. Technically, this is my front. And so we have this like lower dip where I think kind of rainwater and things wash out. So it has always been on a bit of a slope. I think what I'll be doing is trying to work on making it a pleasant transition. And then I'll have to really work on the height of things that go at the back of the border. Uh, in here are more of the bare root astilbes just planted, more autumn anemones, lots of the tiny hellebores that I bought. And then this was, if you watch the bulb planting video, these hyacinths gave me an allergic reaction. Uh, and I had to go inside and scrub my face because it felt like my face was on fire. But I've decided to forgive them since they are really pretty. And I, I don't usually go for assorted packs, but this was a pastel mix, I think of 50 from Eden Brothers. And it looks like a good assortment. That might be a little baby pink for me, but I think they're gonna be really pretty. And I have to say, when I planned on doing this tour, I didn't anticipate that we would get several days of 30 degree weather. So spring kind of stalled out. But, um, oh, this, this is Ivory Prince. Let's see. This is a good example of cutting. So if you cut hellebores at this stage, they will last pretty much a couple weeks, just like they would on the plant. But if you cut them at this stage, they're just gonna start drooping. Yeah, Vicki, it's nice because Eden Brothers is actually where I got the all white daffodils that turned out to not be all white. So I was of course trepidatious that they, uh, <laughs> they might be like cartoon primary colors. Although I'm not entirely sure that uh, hyacinth come in those colors. Um, and then this is the last little stand of hellebores. They do, they are, um, a lot of them are. These are more mature plants, but, um, and I'll go show you, you know what? But we can, when we go walk around to see the backyard, I'll show you the most recent additions and you can see what they look, um, cause it's almost a year since I planted them. Um, so <laughs> I think my Wi-Fi is conspiring uh, with me so I don't have to show you the truly terrifying part of the yard. We still don't have a patio if you followed any of the transformation videos. Uh, I've never been ghosted by anybody, but we unfortunately have been ghosted by our hardscaping contractor. But um, I don't know, I, let's see, I don't think there's any cats. Oh, they're not interested in being on camera today. But um, planters are still here after the holidays. Nothing to plant in them just yet. Some anemones because all I have is anemones, <laughs> ranunculus and pansies. I left the holiday wreath up. Um, 
the gimbal wants to show you the roof of the porch for some reason. Uh, but these beds are pretty much just cleared out. Uh, in the fall, I relocated the peonies that were in here. I left some of the basic shrubs. So these will get addressed, I think, this year. This area, I'm pretty excited to see evolve. It's right outside my office. We have a ton of really beautiful kind of brown, beige, golden tones in alliums, ranunculus, iris. There's some bronze fennel. Um, there is a golden yellow peony called Canary Brilliance that's coming up here. And, well, and then a lot of weeding to do. But um, for any of you guys that have followed the channel for a little while, the ranunculus have been planted out for a few weeks, but frankly, they aren't doing much, uh, except getting very windblown and a little chilly. <clears throat> I do think they will start to bloom this month, but I can't say I'm entirely sold on starting them super early unless you're putting them into a temperature controlled tunnel, which is how commercial growers do it. So uh, I'll be starting another round of them and see if they can last into the heat of June, but I, I'm not entirely convinced that they can be grown at the home garden scale on the way in the way that I kind of thought they were. But there are lots of anemones happening in here. All right, so let's look at some of the, two of the sizes of hellebore plugs. So these were hellebore plugs from Walter's Garden, which is a plug company that I do believe they do sell to some home gardeners because I know Aaron from Impatient Gardener has ordered from them and Sao has, I don't know him very well, but somebody, uh, his Instagram is Garden Evolution. So these were planted in October and they will, it, they may have one bloom, but for the most part, they're pretty tiny. So for you guys that have seen the Come on, gimbal. So these over here were all planted in March from Pine Knot. So I ordered the Pine Knot assort pack and planted them in March. So they had a full year of irrigation and shade. And I haven't cleaned them up yet because I was waiting to see if they were gonna throw up blooms. And they are blooming. And so this was the pine knot strain. So the, the grower pine knot has their own variety and they sell it in plug form as little seedlings. And I wanna say, I have a video on it, but I wanna say they averaged out to about $2 a piece. So it was nice to get flowers the next year. I didn't think when I planted them that they were going to flower the first year and they didn't. But uh, for $2 a plant to get this kind of coverage and then have flowers the following year, I think that that's a good investment. And I should say that that's the most reasonable price for assorted hellebores I've seen. Um, I have bought other ones from like Walter's Garden. Now that Walter's Garden carries proven winners, they're branded names, they... Um, they have some royalties and things associated with them, but they are definitely a little more even in the same size plug. So I'm sure Pine Knot is selling out because all the growers, there's so much demand for flowers and plants this year that everybody's trying to find them. But if you can get them this year, next year, I think they're a really great value. So lots of space still to keep working on perennials. I'm bringing in loads of perennials in waves. I learned from last year that I really can't manage too many plants at one time, but um, I'm gonna try. <laughs> this is the one advantage of filming in portrait mode, which if you're just jumping in, I'm sorry, I made a technical error and we have to film in portrait mode one um, because I have a Stonehenge worth of 
yard bags because of my onion grass problems. But um, these beds are really developing as well, though they have a lot more space to them. Um, one thing I'm trying from the plug growers this year is Lysianthus. That's what all these little guys are. They're, I think I shared last year, <laughs> they are so tiny and so slow to grow from seed. Um, and I had really poor um, that I only got like a handful of plants. This year I decided to try ordering them from a plug broker. They were a larger size, easier to manage. And these were out in the 30 degree weather this week. Uh, it was like 25, two nights ago. And they're doing okay. I would say the hellebore are showing more stress than these guys. Um, four or five years old. Uh, it's so, it smells lovely. And in another month. <laughs> yeah, Vicky. The, I think... They're so hard to come by for home gardeners. I know nurseries don't carry them. Buying them in plug form was great. I'm gonna be selling some of my extra because they come in 125 trays. So I'm gonna be selling them to benefit a local community garden uh, because there's no way I need 500 Lysianthus plants <clears throat> and they don't come in mixtures. But <laughs> yeah, they are so slow until it gets hot. This is another color. Um, so this is, uh, this is the bed here at the fence that I had a lot of annuals from seed in last year just to help kind of cover and with the weeds. Anculus in here. Um, the color scheme. And, you know, I would see the biggest I was looking back at um, I was looking back at the tours from last year. The biggest thing I wish we had been able to do that we just couldn't because of COVID was big trees. So you know, obviously, I have a ton of back of the bed space for shrubs and trees that now COVID has affected the budget a little bit. So I'm not entirely sure how much of that will get done this year, but I have lots of stuff to enjoy. Um, moving over here, uh, just lots of, this is where a lot of the peonies ended up. I have, hello, hopefully you can, you got me. Uh, no matter what I've done, the Wi-Fi can't handle too far from the house. Uh, more Lysianthus, uh, but if you followed me on Instagram or saw the previous videos, I'm still having this like wild onion grass problem. It's absolutely everywhere. Um, I have filled, oh, this many bags since it last rained. Uh, I think it's going to be a weekly thing. Uh, and then we have to make sure we don't let it go to seed because that's, I think, what happened last year is we didn't cut the grass. We covered it and it went to seed and now we are paying the price for it. So last year we spent all our time doing ivy removal and this year I will spend all my time <laughs> digging up tiny onion bulbs. Uh, backside in the maple garden, no real changes here. It looks like all the columbines from last year are going to come back. Um, some of the perennials from last year look really happy like that pulmonaria. Uh, I want to go over and show you the peonies, but I want to make sure we have a Wi-Fi signal. So back here at the back of the house this is the back of my office. And unfortunately, this is where, <laughs> don't mind my car engine lift. That's what I use to rip out shrubs. And I have to just put it on giveaway and let somebody come pick it up. Um, so this back area, this is where a lot of the snow comes off of our house. So I would say this feels like the slowest area to mature. I also think that the bulbs were buried rather deep because this was a very weedy area and I did a really, really thick layer of compost and cardboard here. But um, a lot of people have been watching the Oriental Poppy video where I planted bare root Oriental poppies. I think we lost 
or two came up next to each other and we maybe lost one. Uh, but the rest of them are all happy. And there are some fun things coming in here. Here's more of the oriental poppies. I love these guys. This is Fritillaria persica. If you're not familiar, it's like a fun flower. A lot of florists use it. It's usually available in April, May. Um, it's really strange and interesting flower and I kind of love how they look waking up. Uh, there's some peonies in here, lots of anemones, um, lots of weeds. So yeah, the goal here was to put in some natural stone stairs and make a landing. But like I said, I've never been ghosted until I was ghosted by my landscape hardscaping contractor. So I have to look for a new one and see if I can afford to do any of those projects this year. Uh, but yeah, uh, these are the first anemones coming up. They're called caramel white. Uh, there's better pictures of the ones I just cut on Instagram. But anemones are really fun. If you haven't tried growing them, I would really recommend them. They take a lot of con This is basically a part shade bed and they're doing fine. They're so leggy because I left them in there potting cells for too long but um just each plant 10 15 flowers depending on the variety okay i have to be really careful going uh there's some gorgeous tulips fertile area snowdrops i think that's what surprised me the most back here is that no snowdrops still so i either planted them too deep they rotted or the snow killed them I do not know. This is kind of a little mutant anemone, but I like them when they're like that. And this will be the first season I see some of the iris that I planted. And a lot of them look like they have bloom stalks uh, in other areas to weed. Uh, this, I'm covering this path I think with maybe a few stepping stones. Come on. And creeping thyme. Since all of these areas full of weedy grass, we don't want to mow and we don't want grass. More anemones. Looks like these guys are waking up. More peonies. This is some more of the ranunculus. I think it's just been a little too cold for them. So the more I experiment with this stuff the more i do understand why professional growers grow them in controlled environments it's just not feasible for a lot of home gardeners i'm not going to cover my garden with tunnels oh guys this is what the onion grass situation is so this is an area i haven't gotten to yet it's really and this is really difficult because this is one of the newer beds and the cardboard hasn't completely degraded so it gets stuck uh, blueberry hill hopefully the birds will let us eat some blueberries this year but let's try going back over to the main border hopefully the internet decides to cooperate but yeah, this is a mix of blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, some berry tones in roses and peonies, and a Ruby Falls red bud that just started budding out. So I need to take the uh, support stake off of it so it doesn't grow together but this is maybe one of the last areas to start really weeding and cleaning up I sort of made my weeding game plan based on where I needed to plant stuff so like I needed space for the lisianthus we have a bird food court here in the middle all right everyone cross your fingers the internet cooperates uh, but this is a lot of lavenders, purples, uh, some rose red, some brick. Uh, no real coral in here. 
uh, lots of muscari, lamb's ear. It's really kind of like a moody lavender based palette with some purples, grays. Uh, it's really, it has a lot of great pollinators in it. It has some pretty roses and it has a ton of space to keep filling with things. So, um, but there are a lot of the peonies moved over here because there is so much room. So let's see, let's do a little peony stocking. Trying to get the gimbal to cool. All right, again, the Wi-Fi is tour. I did seven tests and I didn't have it drop in that spot once. Uh, more peonies in this bed. This bed, I could not believe how much room was in it. This is where all the dahlias were last year. And without the dahlias, there's just so much room. So this will probably be a little bit of a hodgepodge for a year or so until I figure out what the plan is. Because once I put all these plants that I had saved in it, I couldn't believe how much more room there was. Uh, but some, some happy iris. I planted the iris really high here so that you can see the heel because this is an area that has like drainage issues. Um, I really want to show you guys the peonies over here. Let me see. Well, the foliage is pretty, but there are no flowers yet. And if the Wi-Fi is gonna keep dropping, it's probably more responsible to just keep a little distance. Uh, but some of my favorites are in here, some of my older ones, a lot of my um, newer tree peonies mixed with some older Itos, those dandy copper kettle, um, Aquila is a tree peony that I love, uh, and then I added some kind of lavender colors to this area. And then this is where things kind of stop, so we still are looking for a tree to conceal that telephone pole. I have lots of room for shrubs. We have room to extend the bed. Originally, Tim, my husband, thought that I had made the beds too big. Now he would like them to be even bigger. So that's nice. Uh, the potager is a little scary looking. Uh, the strawberry planters fell over. <laughs> so I'll have to do a little stabilization there. I do have a few early spring crops started. I have beets. I have, I sowed some carrots. Let's see, I've started broccoli, peas, and salad greens, and then it got really cold. So I don't actually know. Um, I don't think, I think everything's just gonna be a little slow this year because it's been so cold. Um, I would love to take you guys in the bubble, but last night that's where the Wi-Fi dropped. So we can try. Uh, I still have my giant storage tubs of plants. These are salmon ranunculus. They were getting so unhappy in the bubble that I had to plant them somewhere. And uh, so I'm gonna probably have a bunch of these giant pots full of ranunculus. Lots of shrubs and things to add in. started trying to sort out my irrigation supplies, figuring that's a good thing to work on while it's cold. All right, the bubble had a really rough winter and I meant to unzip it. Not that that really matters when it's ripped off its hinges. Hopefully this is the last year of the bubble. And we get a shed, but yeah. Ooh, it's hot in there. So many plants waiting to go in. So this is partially why I'm bringing in my big wholesale plant orders in waves. Because I just have all of these to plant out now that hopefully the freezing cold weather has passed. Um, some of these are the extra Lysianthus. 
So I'm doing a cut flower seedling sale for my local community garden. They're doing fundraising. So I'll be posting about that probably next week. So I'm going to start potting these guys up, growing them on outside. Uh, heucheras, more, oh my God, so many ranunculus, it's crazy. Uh, some lupins, some euphorbia, lots of delphinium. So I ordered the delphiniums. Okay, so now we have internet and the gimbals being a diva. Uh, I ordered like Amsonia, Delphinium, things like that, in Ajuga in landscaper size. So these are those little things on the rack. Sorry, now the now the gimbal's tired. Uh, some Luisia, Louis Luisia. I think that's what it is. It's really cute. I saw it at a nursery and um, it's a perennial type of front of the border. So I felt like it was an alternative to like pansies and annuals, like alyssum and things like that. So, but it's, it's kind of a dry, rocky drought loving plant and it was just too cold for it. So this is what I'm gonna be up to for the next month before the next wave of plants starts to arrive. So I think I definitely overdid it on the pansies. So those will be part of the seedling sale. Um, my, all my sweet peas are out here. I used the tiniest cells for them. They really wanna get out. Now that I think the freezing, freezing temps are done, everything can start to really go out. But, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, this poor bubble. We had to put it up in the, um, and it didn't like the cold weather. All right, does anyone have any questions? I know people are jumping on and off. I do apologize for the portrait view. Uh, now I know to start as you mean to go on in landscape mode. Yeah, I think a lot to look forward to. I'm really happy with how a few of these that are really full are filling in. And I just kind of need to keep working to get the budget together to keep filling things in. Uh, and hopefully get some um, more shrubs, more things. So one last look. And then this area, I don't know if I'm going to start anytime soon, but it needs to be redone. Thank you, Vicki. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, this area does need a lot of work, but it seems like a little more manageable somehow than the other areas because at least it's got some coverage. And yeah, I guess... Oh, I left the blower out, but that does not surprise me. Uh, yeah, nothing happening in the planters yet. It's just still a little chilly. Uh, it's it's easy to forget that. Oh, good, Vicky. Yeah, I really, um, I wasn't really, here, I'll turn the camera around now. So I hadn't really thought much about fertilizing. I don't do a ton of excess fertilizing. But when I read from the American Peony Society how much of a difference it makes in bloom size and also knowing my plants are so young and they've gone through the trauma of being moved every fall for a couple of years, it seemed like the right thing to do. And I have to say, I put the fertilizer down a couple of weeks ago. It rained a few times and they're really responding. Um, but yeah. I know we have Wi-Fi here, so this seems like a good place to see if there's any cats in the window. <laughs> and, of course, they are not, because they never do what they're supposed to. Um, oh, this is maybe the one tragedy so far. I'm not convinced my giant old lilac that started my whole gardening journey. I'm not entirely sure if it's still alive. 
I've scraped it back, the bark. I've seen some green, but this is what one of the other lilacs looks like. And that one still just looks like twigs. So it will be so sad if I have to do something and replace this. Um, this is my very first plant that made me start gardening. It was here and the snow from the roof came down and knocked it, tipped it forward and it was blocking the window. And so I started pruning it into this kind of like vase fan shape to frame the window. So boy, I really hope it decides to bloom this year. Be very sad. Yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for my first live tour. I do apologize for the portrait format. And um, yeah, I'm excited to just start doing a few more of these as the season goes on and we have more to see, but I can, I'm a really visually imaginative person. And so I kind of feel like I can sort of see where it'll be in another year or two. And I know that that's hard, certainly hard in a visual medium when we're just looking at twigs and sticks and two inch tall plants. But <clears throat> I think the, the two gardens that we started with, the um, white pine and the front gate are a kind of good indicator of where we're heading uh, with lots and lots of coverage to hopefully minimize some of this weeding. And then also just tons of blooms carrying through. Thanks, Vicki. Thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Luba, too, I, if you're still here, I appreciate it. Thank you for the questions. And, uh, yeah, I think it's beginning of, I want to say maybe we'll try this again around the beginning of May because we should have the first peonies by then and probably some of the first blooming iris. Uh, so it would be nice to see that. And then, of course, I'm still going to make videos weekly uh, as things happen. I think as I just keep finishing these areas and potting, uh, getting those plants in. And then I do have a ton of seedlings and things in the basement still growing on. So there's lots more to come. I hope you guys uh, are able to get into your gardens. I hope you have lovely weather. It's a little chilly, but I like working outside when it's a little cool. I'd much rather be cool than too hot. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon.